Welcome back into Big Ten Media Days, live at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, now joined by Wisconsin coach Luke Fickle. Luke, welcome in. I, I don't know, wasn't sure exactly where to start, but I think I'm going to start with this. I don't know if you saw this or not. Your guy, Mike Vrabel, was on Pardon My Take last week. <laughs> Did you hear? Did you no, hear, he. Hear uh, they, they sent me pictures. So yeah. So uh, he was asked on site, "You guys fight, who would win?" And he said, "I'd beat that ass." <laughs> Do we agree? No, 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 not even close. But uh, at least I give him his due. Like whenever we talk about wrestling, yeah, I, I always say that he would never quit. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. like it was never declared a winner because it wouldn't ever end. And then, but. You know, he sometimes goes the other other end of things and just, you know, kind of shuns the other side away. But I think he really deep down inside knows. knows. Um, there's there's no doubt. I mean, he was a basketball guy for all. I mean, I know he played 14 years and his body's a little beat up. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if there's ever a time I would uh, I would say that 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 would be told true. I think he I think he said uh, <laughs> he was too athletic to wrestle. <laughs> was, I think that was just, I think that's what he said. I'll give him I'll give him that. I mean, his dad was a high school basketball coach, and I think he was <laughs> obviously pushed to to continue to do that. But he went to a high school where wrestling was like top in the country, right? Uh, in Walsh Jesuit, so then it became something that he, he could have done. But I think maybe deep down, so I don't know if he really had the heart for it. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna love that. <laughs> uh, so you just got off the podium a little bit ago. You you had a 13 minute opening statement. You took one question. It was the greatest filibuster and. <laughs> Big Ten champion, uh, Big Ten uh, Media Days history. So we we have some questions then to ask here. Uh, first of all, you guys go down to Platteville for a second straight year. You're going to be going down there an extra week. I know you talked about last year where you wanted to. You wish you could have stayed longer last year. Now you are. It's going to be something you're going to be doing for the next few years yeah. as well. What is it about Platteville? Or just I guess maybe it's not even just Platteville. Just getting away as a team. Well, I, I think it's first and foremost it's about getting away and. Um, we had kind of had envisions of, okay, maybe we can try a couple of different places to see what fits us. Uh, we wanted to be there longer. So this year, I actually think it's 13 days. Um, but after being there the seven days last year, the six days we were there last year, uh, the way they took care of us, the, the, you know, from the way that they fed you, the facility, just, uh, it was like, this is a no brainer. It's, it's really a great opportunity for us to get away, to spend as much time together as we possibly can and, and really try to find more ways to grow outside of just playing the game of football. And I think that's so critical, even more so today um, with as many new guys as you have within your program. And it's not just transfers. It's also getting some of those younger guys that are freshmen or redshirt freshmen or guys that maybe came in early, you know, that you don't see as freshmen anymore, but that are going to have a bigger role within your program to really get them to, you know, get to know each other and a lot of things even a little deeper. When you go into this second year, is there something that you know going down there that you didn't know last year? I'm guessing there's quite a quite a bit. Not just not just in terms of like what it's going to be like, but your team in general and your program in general. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know that uh, it's hard to say. Like in year one at Cincinnati, as we started the season, you re realize, oh my goodness, we there's a lot of things we don't know. Uh, you think going into your second time of, you know, starting over with a program that you would, okay, now we, we didn't know these things. So we're going to do a much better job at making sure we know these things as we go into year one. And as we got in the season, there was a lot of things you're like, oh my goodness, we, I don't know if we knew that. And, and I don't know if you truly can um, because adversity, you know, kind of brings a lot of things out and, and you see a lot more things. Um, but we're definitely in a different place now. We're in a different place in spring. Um, we were a different place even in winter and spring. Um, but I do think that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're much different. And, and the team is much different because they understand a lot of what it is that, you know, there's an expectation from, you know, leadership and from, you know, me and the rest of the coaches at, at what it is that we're looking for. And we don't just mean the way you play cover two or the way you play cover three or the way you run, you know, counter or power. It's more the way you do all things. Yeah. So you, you mentioned all the new players and it is, it's been like that. And I know you've said from the jump that you don't want to live yeah. in the transfer portal, but it is kind of also just the world that we live in right now in, in college football. I'm wondering for you, based on what college football is like in 2022, November of 2022, when you took the job to where it is here on July 23rd of 2024, I mean, it could not be a bigger <laughs> chasm difference, right? <laughs> so how much bigger of a challenge do you think it has been for you than maybe you thought it would be when you were standing there in, uh, you know, down in the, in the stadium that day? 
Uh, it, it is. I mean, uh, the the hardest part is the the kind of the end line keeps changing. I've always kind of prided myself, and not I always, but like as I started being a head coach, whether it was starting to be a defensive coordinator, always having a plan. And, and you know, if it's a defensive coordinator, a development plan, and what's it look like over you know two, four, six, eight years, and and you go to Cincinnati and you put this plan, like okay, what's what do you want it to look like in two, four, six, and eight? You know, from everything. And as you start this, you start to think about, okay, that's, you know, after year one, we're going to put this plan. And the hard part is, is all of college football, whether it's, you know, the realignment, whether it's, you know, the new teams, not that it changes as much, but it's like, now it's like, okay, well, what does this transfer world look like? What does this NIL world look like? What does this revenue sharing world look like? What does this play, like this end line continues to shift in, what it does, it just makes it really hard if you're a guy that wants to plan some things and look, okay, so you can measure <laughs> where you're going um, has made it, I'd say more difficult, but very different um, than even two years ago when I started. So, I, and again, I, I was talking with Chris McIntosh about this earlier and the, the, the house settlement and how it's going to affect money wise. Do you feel, as a football coach, when you look at what Wisconsin offers, do you feel like you have the ability to um, compete with everybody else in the Big Ten just based on what you you have to offer players. Well, you're always going to say yes. I mean, yeah, you know, I know, any, but... any coach that takes a job knows that, okay, we're, we're going to, you went to Cincinnati and they were, you know, had struggled and like, you're going to be able to compete. Um, I say yes, but like it, it's really vague to say because we don't really know. That's the hard part of the end line. We don't really know what we're competing in. It, you know, 20 years ago it was competing and keeping up with facilities. And now it's, you know, is it competing in the NIL world? Is it competing in what this revenue sharing is going to be like? You're always going to have to continue to know you're going to have to adjust and adapt to continue to grow, to compete. Um, so I, I'd say, yes, I'd say that if, and when, you know, our commissioner in college football puts, you know, some parameters and things into place, I think it, uh, the idea is it's going to give us all a greater opportunity to compete on, you know, somewhat of a closer playing field um, monetarily than what we are doing right now. Camp football itself, you do have a bit of a – you have a couple position battles, obviously. The, the one that everyone has been talking about, we talked about in the spring a bunch, was quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. How far into camp – and in – you know, Phil has said this. I've, he's only had to make one decision his entire career about who the starting quarterback was going to be. But for you as a head coach, you'd like to have that settled in uh, as soon as possible. Like, we is will. there a timing on it at all? We will. I mean, the unique thing is, is do you ever really announce it? Well, I you mean, know, some I, people do. So, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, from within our program, I think it's important for, for somebody to truly legitimately step forward and say, okay, he's taking the number one reps. Yeah. So those that are at practice at some point in time, I think will recognize it. Um, I would like to say that that's sooner rather than later. Um, but, you know, if it continues to be a really tight battle, which it has been, um, it may last a little bit longer. Uh, but to truly come out publicly and yeah. say, I don't know that that's the case, um, just because of sheer fact you do things from within your own program. Right. But it's not, I don't think it's going to be hard to tell as we get into week two and three, where's this thing going? It was, it's funny you say that because, uh, a previous coach at Wisconsin said that if you had been at practice, you wouldn't understand who's going to be the starting quarterback. And we got to the opening day and it was not the guy that anybody had, <laughs> that we, we had seen was actually going to be the guy, but I don't think that this is, it's, it's a different situation, yeah. certainly with what, uh, with, with what you've got the, um, other spot that you know is probably going to be uh, focused on is, is outside linebacker and inside linebacker, just because you remade those rooms. How confident are you that you're going to be better in those spots oh, than no you doubt. were last? Okay, yeah, I mean, like it's you know there, there's some there's some night and day differences. Um, the thing about that gives us a difference in those drop spots in particular is I would hope that we can legitimately only play those guys 50% of the time. So I don't know about as much inside because yeah. that's a little harder to do. Um, but on those edges, you know, there's four or five guys that I could legitimately see if there's 80 plays in the game being 40 and 40, you know, um, inside. I would hope, I mean, with what we've got and the ability to do some more, if it's 60, you know, 30, 60, I mean, like, so 
there's still com competition and stuff, but I think that when the discrepancy between one and two becomes really tight and close, those guys all need to, deserve to be able to play. And in the long run, it makes us a hell of a lot better because you get to the end of the year, and let's be honest, like C.J. Getz last year was 248 pounds when he started the season. He might have been 224 taking the field against, yeah. you know, against Minnesota. Just he was so wore out and beat down because we couldn't. Do a whole lot, and and the same thing in, inside. Yeah, I know you got to go. Just real quickly, defensive line. How comfortable are you right now? I know you, you spent at least tried to bring in some more bodies there. Uh, just just quickly, how you feel about that? I, 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 that's I think is a big part of of camp. Everybody talks about the quarterback, and we know that there's going to be a starting quarterback, right? I mean, right. pretty obvious. Yes. I don't know what that rotation on the defensive front looks like. You know, I, I know this that. If the guys like James Thompson and and Kurt Neal and Ben Barton have to play 95% of the snaps between the three of them, we won't be nearly as good as we need to be, and we sure as hell won't be playing our best ball at the end of the year. So between those other four or five, even maybe a possibility of a freshman kid being able to give us legitimately legitimate snaps in there um, might be my biggest thing for camp. Yeah. All right. Hey, Luke, really appreciate your time and uh, good luck the rest of the day here in Indy. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. There All he right. is, Wisconsin coach Luke Fickle.